Well, good morning. Linda and I are still down here in north central Wyoming, and I have a video here that I want to talk to you about the things they don't really tell you about your lithium battery power stations, no matter what brand you want to buy or what brand you already own. I just want to fill you in on some things you need to know that's not really evident, maybe. Or maybe, you know how some of us, we get a product and open up the box or take it out of the box and throw away the manual? Well, I want to cover some of those things in this video about power stations. Also, also, I want to talk to you about awnings because we've had uh, good luck and bad luck with awnings. And I want to tell you what we think. So if you're interested in power stations or awnings, <laughs> just because I got asked about an awning and I thought, you know what? There, there are some things that people need to know about awnings. Anyhow, there's some info in this video that you're gonna to wanna to hear. Well, somebody last week asked me about awnings and what my, what my recommendation was. We've had regular travel trailers that had the articulated awnings, you know, they roll out and they attach to the side of your trailer and they do this. Um, those to me are overkill on a trailer like this, my little six by 10 cargo trailer. Plus, I've had problems with those in the past, numerous problems like plastic parts breaking uh, on, on them and then having to drive to a city so I could find a RV shop that had the replacement parts or you might have to order them. They're too complicated. Not only that, but I've seen too many RVs by the side of the road where those things had come loose in the wind and done major damage. Too many problems with those. I'll show you what Linda and I use. Basically, we just tie a tarp. Uh, we, we go to Harbor Freight. They sell those really nice, heavy-duty tarps. You can get them silver on one side and black on the other, so you're not tying up an ugly blue tarp. And we just tie them up to the front and rear of the trailer. All I did is I bought two of these stainless steel, these are called pad eyes, but if you use that uh, term in a hardware store, they won't know what you're talking about. You buy them in the marine section. These two stainless steel pad eyes, one here, and then one on the front corner. That's it. Then the trailer is 10 feet long, so I buy an eight by 10 tarp, which is nine and a half feet, and uh, tie the long end, one up, one to each uh, side up there, and, and then pull it out. This right here is a simple painter's pole. And of course, it ex this one extends out to, I think, 16 feet or something like that. And you know what this is? What do you put on the end of a painter's pole? A roller. This is a roller that I've cut right here. So now this end goes up and through the grommet of the tarp. We only use one pole and we use that on the end of the trailer that has the door, the front part of the trailer, so it's pulled out. And then I tie the other corner down, kind of at, a, at an angle. And it's a little lower, it can block the wind on that end. It uh, makes the rain shed off. And it also makes the tarp a lot more wind resistant. It, if you've got both sides pulled out, then the tarp is gonna flap like this, like crazy with even the slightest breeze. And that's another thing about an awning is that no matter what awning you have, uh, if you're out west here, the wind blows and every night before you go to bed, that awning has gotta come down. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna be getting up in the middle of the night and furling the awning. That means rolling it up and putting it away. It's better to do that before you go to bed rather than at 3 a.m. <laughs> I'll show you something else. One problem with a tarp or an awning is every time you open the door, the corner of the door, when you get it out here, it starts scraping on your awning and that's a sharp corner and it'll damage any awning you have. You can see that up there, I've put a roller. I had to make that one. I had this roller mounted vertically like this, you know, straight up and down, but all it did was scuff as it went across. It didn't really roll. And I realized it had to be at a 45 degree angle. I made this little aluminum bracket like this so that this would be at a 45 degree angle. Just cut this out of some eighth inch aluminum. But I'll bet you if you look online and on Amazon, you can find some kind of a roller ball that's designed to do exactly this. And you can probably just buy one. 
But yeah, this rolls on the tarp now and keeps the corner of the door from tearing it. The only other kind of awning that appeals to me personally, because I like to keep things simple, is the kind that you can buy them in different lengths. And basically when you're done using it, you roll it up by hand and then zip it into its enclosure. I don't think those are too expensive. And they come with two poles. So you, the awning and the two poles, and they're easy to put away. I would consider one of those, something without too much hardware. Anyways, that's what I've got to say about awnings. The other thing I wanted to talk about was power stations. This is a Blue Eddy AC200L liking this one a lot, but no matter what brand you buy, no matter what size, there's some things you need to know. Well, as people just learned this winter, there are times when the lithium batteries just stop working. And how does that affect you with a power station? Well, I'll tell you, a power station, no matter what brand, because lithium batteries are all, you know, when it comes to temperature, they're all gonna act about the same. Um, basically, you can draw power from them from all the way down to minus four Fahrenheit, you can get power out. Below that, if the battery actually gets that cold, it'll shut off. And you can take power out up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So minus four to 104 or minus, or minus 20 Celsius to plus 40 Celsius. Also, to charge them, like right now, if my trailer wasn't heated at 32 degrees right now, if I tried charging my power station and the battery was at 32 degrees, it wouldn't accept a charge. That battery's gotta be above 32 degrees to accept a charge. So there's that too. You can charge a lithium battery from 32 degrees or zero degrees Celsius up to 104 degrees or plus 40 degrees Celsius. So you gotta operate within those parameters. I was out the other day and it was almost 30 below zero and I'm making video and I'm talking and everything and I went inside to check what I'd done. There was no audio. My mic quit working, little lithium battery in here. It just shut off. It, I got about, I got a few minutes worth of video and then the mic shut off. So that's the way they operate. The most common question I get asked about power stations is what size to buy? And boy, that really depends on your personal needs. I'd say for a bare minimum, a thousand watt hours. If all you're doing is charging your phone battery and your camera batteries and just keeping up with things like that, uh, you might get away with smaller, like a, like a 500 watt hour unit. A thousand watt hours is, is better. If you're running refrigeration and you wanna run the fan, the, the, your Max Air fan or your Fantastic fan or whatever, and you've got things that you need to run like that, um, the most popular, power station on the market right now, the most popular size, I mean, is that is about 2000 watt hours. Uh, though, so that's something you could look for. Now, those are heavy. They weigh about anywhere from 45 pounds to 65 pounds, depending on the brand. Um, you want to make sure it's got lithium iron phosphate batteries, LifePo4, because they're, they're safe. A regular lithium ion battery, which there's still people making power stations with the old lithium ion, those can catch fire. Anyway, um, I think my favorite size is, is the 2000 watt hour. They're, they're basically 2048 watt hours. Uh, and uh, all it seems like most of the companies are making a size like that. I like that Blue Eddy I've got. Blue Eddy makes several in that size. They make the, the Blue Eddy AC200P, which is very reasonably priced right now. They make the Blue Eddy AC200 Max, and their latest is the Blue Eddy AC200L that I've got in there. Uh, another thing right now for Blue Eddy, I'll, I'll go ahead and put in a, a promo for them right now too, is you can buy reconditioned. You can buy a reconditioned Blue Eddy for about a third off, 25% to a third off, and they, have, they come with a full warranty. That's quite a savings. With any power station, Whenever you turn the AC on, it's the inverter here is using power. These outlets are hot right now. And just sitting here with nothing plugged into it, this is probably using, oh, I don't know, anywhere from one and a half to 3% per hour, just sitting here. A, a very poor use of the AC power on here would be to run a 110 volt refrigerator because the refrigerator cycles on and cycles off. But when it cycles on, this inverter is still drawing current. 
A better thing to do is use a 12 volt compressor refrigerator that plugs in on the DC side. So, and it doesn't do that. You'll get efficient use that way. Just remember, anytime the AC is on, the inverter is using current. Plug in whatever you're gonna do, coffee pot or whatever, turn the AC on, use it when you're done. Just remember to turn the AC off. Now you can see I'm at 61% right now. When you store these, you want to store them between 60 and 80%. If you happen to charge this up to 100% and you take it out for a weekend and you don't use it and you get back home again, don't put it on the shelf at 100%. Plug something into it, take it down below 80%, something between 60 and 80% and store it that way. A lithium battery that's 100% if you leave it stored for a long time, the battery will swell and damage itself. So make sure your power station, which you've invested a lot of money in, is stored between 60 and 80%. The last thing I wanna talk about is how you charge a power station. Um, I'm no expert when it comes to electronics, so please go easy on me in the comments if I say something wrong. But basically, it's a matter of how much solar you're trying to put into it. For example, that Blue 80 AC200L will accept up to 1200 watts of solar, but it'll only accept 15 amps. And, but you can put in anything from 12 to 145 volts into it. All right, I know that's a little complicated, but let me, let me see if I can explain it to you this way. If you take a 100 watt solar panel in bright sunshine, It'll put out about oh, maybe 18 volts, 18 to 20 volts, and it'll put out around five amps. If you put three of those 100 watt solar panels in, in, uh, in parallel, hooked up in parallel, then you're gonna get um, 300 watts, but you're gonna get um, about 15 amps on a good sunny day, and you're gonna be putting out uh, still around, you know, around 18 volts. Well, that's okay. But a lot of these power stations will only take 10 amps. I've got 600 watts on the roof. And if I have those two panels hooked up in parallel, it'll put out 600 watts. It'll put out 18 volts, but it'll put out like 30 amps. You see, that's way too much for a power station that's rated to take 15. Now the power station will knock that down to the 15. The battery is gonna get hot and you don't wanna overheat a lithium battery. In this case, and what I've done here is I've hooked my panels up in series. Um, boy, I hope this is easy, easy to understand. In series, I can get 600 watts that's what the panels are rated out. I mean, you, you'd have to have perfect conditions to get that. But let's say I put out 600 watts. In series, it'll put out um, double the voltage. So I'll get 35 to 40 volts easy out of those panels, but the amperage stays at the max amperage that the panel, that one panel will put out. So uh, uh, I've got two 300 watt panels and a 300 watt panel will put out, could put out 15 amps. Once again, if I had it hooked up in parallel, it could put out 30 amps, which would be way too much for my power station. But by hooking my panels up in series, it'll still put out a max of 15 amps, but it'll double the voltage and which the power station will handle up to 145 volts, but I would only be putting out about 40 volts. So I'm safe there. So you have to watch how many amps you put into whatever power station it is you choose, and then you gotta decide whether you wanna hook your, your uh, solar panels up in parallel or series. And in my case, it's better in series. There's a drawback to series. If you get a shadow across one panel, it basically knocks both panels out. Whereas in parallel, if you get a shadow like a tree branch across one panel, the other panel still puts out. So if you're parking in areas that have spotty shade like that, you're better off to be hooked up in parallel if possible. Out here in the west, it's pretty wide open, although we spent a month in Idaho last year and it was tough to find a campsite that didn't have spotty shade because of all the trees and the campsites in the northern half of Idaho where we were. So there's that to consider. 
One thing that Ceres will do though, if you hook them up in Ceres, that early morning sun and that late afternoon sun, a Ceres panel tends to put out, or a Ceres connection, tends to put out uh, a little a little more voltage in a situation like that, gives you a little better efficiency in, the, in that condition. Anyways, I hope that's somewhat clear. Maybe play this video over again a couple times to get that. Basically what I'm saying is that if your panels are hooked up in parallel, you can overpower the battery in your power station that you paid a lot of money for. You can cause it to overheat and degrade the battery over time. In series, you won't have that problem depending on how many panels you got hooked up to it, you know, and you could hook up a lot of pa panels in series and, and, and be way overpowered too. But anyways, I think for RV use, I think you understand what I mean. That's what I have to say about power stations. I'm sorry this was too lengthy, but I think it's important. If you guys have any questions about what I just told you, uh, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Like I said, I'm no tech electronics expert like Will Prouse. That's not me. He's got a brain for that. That guy is smart. But anyways, I hope I helped you somewhat. See you around.